You had mentioned that you had gotten really good at reading people as a club promoter. How do you read people and what signs do you look for? And what could the average person take from that to imply in their own life? Are you looking for incongruities between what somebody says and the way that they act? So paying attention is the first thing. Um, I did a podcast a while ago, a long time ago, like five years ago, with this guy that I was kind of interested in, uh, was curious about for a while. I don't know if I respected him or not, but he was an interesting guy. And we'd done this entire episode, and there's just little sort of glimmers of like narcissist bedposts came in a little bit. And a lot of a lot of stories that didn't need to be brought back toward him were. And then at the very very end of the episode, after we finished recording, I said, uh, "Dude, just wanted to say, like, you know, followed your stuff for a while, and uh, you know, I really, it was really great to meet you." And there was this sort of half microsecond like flash where obviously his ego got really really inflated. And then he tamped it back down again because he didn't want to show me that what I'd said had inflated his ego. And I was like, huh, I don't trust mm. you. I don't trust you. You're trying to play this strange role. And it wasn't coming out of some degree of vulnerability or whatever it was. Like, I've got friends that are shit at taking compliments. It wasn't that. Mm -hmm. There's people who play a role because they're trying to get something on the other side. And those are people that you need to be really concerned about. For me, like, I struggle to be myself. I'm still discovering what that means to actually be mm -hmm. myself. That's a process of discovery. And I'm trying my best to move forward toward that thing. There are other people who want you to see them in a certain way because they want a particular outcome and everything below that is contrived. And those are people that you need to be really concerned about. Paying attention to body language, paying attention to rigorously scrutinizing whether or not the things that they said previously align with the things that they're saying now. That's interesting because you said that thing there, but this seems to really contradict what you just said, and you haven't called that out. And you said that with loads of certainty, and you're saying this with loads of certainty. Like, just be really, really the uh, strong beliefs loosely held, not loose beliefs strongly held. Like, be concerned about anyone who says everything with conviction. Mm -hmm. Like, you should have some degree of caveat or uncertainty just baked into the system of you. There's, uh, you know, Peter Zion, do you know him? No. Geopolitics expert. Fascinating guy, been on the show. Not, I, I don't have the geopolitical expertise to be able to assess how accurate he is about all of these things, but that man has the most conviction of anyone I've ever heard. Like, just fucking everything is the way that it is. This is the way that this thing is. And I was just found myself being so seduced by this the the way that he put things across. And if he's right, and if what he's saying is backed up with the stats below, and I have no reason to presume that it's not. I'm like, wow, like that is the way that you want to get this thing across. There was no ifs, ands, or buts. There was no caveats. There was no nothing. It's like, this is the way that this thing is. But if someone who maybe knows their industry is able to be that convincing, someone who doesn't is also able to create a simulacrum of that, like to do the posturing thing without any of the research done before. So you just need to be really, really careful about people like that. How are you cautious about people coming onto your show and saying certain things with super high conviction on something that maybe you haven't researched a bunch mm. and you can't really fight that perspective? Because we've had people on this podcast before, um, for one, Fresh and Fit. They came on the show. Mm. They were saying a bunch of things about dating that we had no idea about. They have all these statistics and studies and resources and et cetera. Mm. We can't combat that because we don't have the data. Mm. At what point do you draw a line do you think that you need to know the other person's argument inside and out to have them on your podcast? That's unrealistic. Like you're always going to be the most stupid person in the room when it comes to pretty much any topic, unless it's your wheelhouse. Like someone comes on and starts talking about like real estate in Las Vegas. Mm. And you're like, hey, <laughs> fucking, LA, in my uh -oh, case, yeah. LA. Like They're step in into the step into the fucking ring, my friend. Like step into my office. Um, it's unrealistic to expect anybody that hosts a general show to be an expert in any of those things. In my experience, like, if you give people enough rope, they'll end up hanging themselves. Like, people will say things that are like, hmm, I don't feel like that's true. And if you've got an even remotely smart audience, they're able to scrutinize that stuff for themselves. Now, it's your job to say things like, huh, like, where'd you get that from? Like, what's that's that? What, it, oh, is that? Is that a Pew research? Is that GSS data? That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Hmm, and like, what ways might you be wrong? Like here's a few things, right, hmm. to work out whether or not the creator that you are slightly skeptical about, or hmm. anybody that you follow, me included, is telling the truth. When was the last time that they publicly admitted that they were wrong? When was the last time that they changed their mind on something? When was the last time that they surprised you with a take? Like uh, Roe versus Wade happens and you go, wow, wasn't expecting that. 
That's interesting. Or Israel Palestine occurs, or Ukraine, or fuck, like some, Lizzo's in the news, and you go, huh? That that's a surprising take from that. That's interesting, even if it's like not something that you agree with, but it wasn't what you predicted. And the reason that that's important is it shows that they're thinking for themselves. Mm. And you can have high conviction that that person is actually doing some work as opposed to, again, the mono thinking, just let's put this ideology on as a onesie and just proceed forward. Like, that's not what you want. The problem is you can't really argue with anecdotal experience. So if they come on and they say, we've spoken with 2,000 women, and from our experience that we've seen firsthand, this has been true in the overwhelming case. Mm -hmm. And I could say, well, maybe that's not a scientific study, but from your perspective, that works. From my perspective... Uh, you know, my experience works. Mm -hmm. And then there becomes a bit of a stalemate to whoever sounds more confident mm -hmm. wins. And it seems like and no matter what you talk about, whoever's more confident, even if they're wrong, wins the argument in the eyes of the audience Absolutely. or wins the debate. Fluency is a proxy for truthfulness, hmm. right? If someone is able to just deploy words yeah. in a slick manner, it's the classic like salesman charlatan that like encourages you to get your drive paved, even though you don't need it doing. It's like, oh, it'll, fight, it'll protect from the frost and blah, 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 blah. Mm. So, I mean, with that, there are certain things that you could do. You could ask a question like, do you think that um, the show that you're doing is swayed at all by being in Miami and by you sourcing a lot of the girls from a city which is known for uh, partying and, and stuff like that? Like, we that did ask that. Yeah. And what did they and say? And they said, no, we fly out women. From all across from around the, the world, States. with I different mean, degrees selected, of education. But the selection criteria is still usually mm -hmm. they've asked to come onto this sort of a show. It's the same with Brian and the Whatever podcast, yes. mm -hmm. right? Like it's the same that cohort of women. There is a very specific. I don't know what the unifying thing is, and it's not like there's a single unifying thread that ties them all together. But there will be a number of things that motivate girls and guys to go onto these sorts of shows. So you, it's the same reason. What makes someone comment? Like, why a YouTube comment? threads always kind of the same they always have the same tenor well we don't know what causes someone to be motivated to comment but we know that it's happened to all of these people and there can't be an unlimited number of things because it's like out of hundreds of thousands of views only a very small number of people comment okay so there's something which is a selection criteria which encourages those people to comment and the same thing goes for that but yeah with anecdotal experience and stuff like that you're like oh well I've, that's interesting that that's the way that you see it but for me in my experience that doesn't seem to be the case like do you think but asking people like, what ways might you be wrong? When was the last time that you admitted that you're wrong? When was the last time you changed your mind? When was the last time that you said something that surprised your audience in terms of a take? Those are really good ways. So I want to turn that back on you. When was the last time you were wrong about something? I've had a couple of big ones. So for a while, I was parroting, I was regurgitating GSS data from 2018. From 2008 to 2018, the number of men that reported not having sex in the last 12 months aged between 18 and 30 went from 8% to 28%, right? So massive increase. New GSS data came out and it completely reversed that trend. It's like way fewer men were sexless. So I put a post out on Twitter and I was like, I was wrong about this. I've been quoting old data. I didn't see the 2019 data and the 2020 data was skewed because it was COVID. But 21, 22, and I think 23, I'm not sure if that's out yet, that the trend doesn't seem to be there anymore. I'm like, all right, well, this is interesting. This shows that something else is going on. 